Hello, human geographers. We are back at it again this evening. Tonight, we are going to examine the first major agricultural revolution. So let's begin with what humans were doing before this revolution. Early humans lived in hunter-gatherers groups. These were limited to relatively small bands of people whose numbers were limited by the availability of food. A tribe might have 30 to 50 people because anything larger would have likely exceeded the carrying capacity. Generally, men did the hunting while women gathered wild plants and fruits. Then around 9 to 10,000 BCE or around 12,000 years ago, a process began to occur. This process was known as domestication or the successful transformation of plant or animal species from a wild state to a condition of dependency on human management, usually with distinct physical change from wild forebearers. So humans began to domesticate wild plants and animals. Humans began to intentionally plant, breed, care for, and protect these previously wild plants and animals. And this occurred gradually with lots of trial and error. Eventually, this led to plants and animals that were genetically and physically different from their wild ancestors. They were larger, better tasting, less aggressive as far as animals, and more productive. So with the rise of plant and animal domestication, humans shifted from being hunter-gatherers to farmers. And we see the rise of agriculture, which is the deliberate effort to modify a portion of Earth's surface through the cultivation of crops and the raising of livestock for sustenance or economic gain. This transition from nomadic hunter-gatherers to agriculturalists is a period dating back 10,000 years known as the First Agricultural Revolution. And it achieved plant domestication and animal domestication, and is also known as the Neolithic Revolution. As humans shifted to agriculture, other changes began to occur. While hunter-gatherers were small bands of nomadic people dispersed over the landscape, early agriculturalists came to be settled in more densely populated, sedentary, staying in one spot, farming communities that were usually along rivers. These permanent communities led to the emergence of urban societies. Those eventually became the first civilizations. The stable food supply allowed some members of these new civilizations to specialize in jobs other than growing food. So we saw full-time blacksmiths and carpenters, soldiers and religious leaders. And with the emergence of specialists, new technologies were created and new innovations implemented. So where did this all begin? Carl Sauer, a leading expert on the origins of agriculture, believed that plant domestication occurred in multiple regions of great biodiversity, where many different kinds of wild plants grew. Importantly, most geographers now agree that there were several independent herds of agriculture where people domesticated plants and animals that were local to their region. In fact, there are generally five or six independent herds, and we're going to look at each hearth individually. A note for the AP exam, they expect students to know where certain prominent crops originated, so be sure to make note of that. Let's start in the Middle East, specifically a region known as the Fertile Crescent between the Tigris and Euphrates rivers. 
the Fertile Crescent domesticated grains like wheat, barley, oats, and rye, as well as grapes, apples, and olives, and animals like sheep, goats, cattle, as well as camels. In East Asia, in what is modern China between the Yellow and Yangtze rivers, rice and soybeans were first domesticated. In South Asia, the Indus River Valley civilization domesticated a form of dry rice, as well as strains of wheat. It was also one of the three hurts for the domestication of cattle. In Southeast Asia, taro, yams, and bananas were prominent food plants. Sugarcane was also domesticated here. As far as animals, it's believed that several kinds of pigs, water buffalo, chickens, and some waterfowl like ducks and geese were first domesticated in Southeast Asia. Next is Africa. East and West Africa gave us peanuts, yams, and coffee. Sorghum, a grain that is still prominent in Africa, was domesticated in Central Africa. Lastly, the Americas. Maize, or corn, as well as tomatoes, squash, and several varieties of bean were first domesticated in what is now central Mexico, while potatoes were domesticated in the northern Andes of modern Peru. Domesticated animals of the Americas included the llama, alpaca, guinea pig, and turkey. And agricultural technology gradually diffused from these early hurts over time. For example, through contagious diffusion, hunter-gatherer groups that were near agricultural societies were exposed to farming techniques and soon adopted them. Then, the movement of people to new locations spread agriculture via relocation diffusion. But beginning in the 15th and 16th centuries, a new pattern of diffusion emerged. It came to be known as the Columbian Exchange. In 1492, Columbus made contact with the Americas, touching off the exchange of crops, disease, people, and ideas between the Americas, West Africa, and the Old World. The relocation diffusion of crops and seeds was greatly accelerated by worldwide trade and communication networks that were established by European exploration and colonialism. These plants and animals were relocated to new regions with climate and geography similar to those of the point of their domestication. So new world crops like potatoes, chili peppers, tomatoes, cacao, maize, and tobacco were brought from the Americas to Europe, Asia, and Africa. Old world crops such as sugarcane, coffee, Soybeans, oranges, and bananas were brought to the Americas. And while these plants and animals were relocated to new areas, so too were diseases. Influenza and smallpox were particularly devastating to indigenous Americans who had never encountered them before. So millions of indigenous Americans died after contact with Europeans. So make sure you're able to understand the historical and contemporary impacts of the Columbian Exchange. Many large plantations were formed in the Americas to grow sugarcane, coffee, and bananas for export to markets in the Old World. And because these plantations were labor intensive, many workers were needed. And because so many indigenous people died due to disease and conflict, Europeans brought huge numbers of enslaved Africans to the Americas to harvest these raw materials for export. Even now, we can see the impacts of the Columbian Exchange. Coffee and bananas, originally from Old World hurts, continue to thrive in the tropical climate of the Americas. And crops like maize continue to thrive in Europe, Asia, and Africa, as well as the Americas. And a lot of the historical and cultural associations we have with food stem from the Colombian Exchange. There is no Irish potato famine without the Colombian Exchange, 
as potatoes were first domesticated in South America. And perhaps the most prominent animals associated with the American diet, cattle and chickens, aren't native to the Americas.